Hi guys, welcome back to my channel. This is Catherine with The Perfect Place to Start and today I have a Christmas cookie cutter wreath to share with you using vintage cookie cutters. So let's jump in. So for this project, we're gonna use a wicker wreath form. I got this at a garage sale. You can pick up these wreath forms at the Dollar Tree as well. I'm just using some ribbon I had in my stash, but I'm pretty sure this came from Hobby Lobby. Um, as I'm uh, wrapping it around the wreath form, I wanna make sure that it's super tight. And then every like third wrap around, I just put a little bit of hot glue on the wicker part, and then I just keep wrapping. And I'm gonna do that for this entire wreath. I believe it takes about one spool of ribbon to cover this whole um, wreath. It, it might be a little bit less, like I said, this was in my stash, but I did pick this up in the Christmas section at Hobby Lobby. So we're ready to work on the cookie cutters and I'm using this paper pack that I picked up at Hobby Lobby in the Christmas section. Pretty sure I got it last year, but I think that I have seen it there again this year. And then I'm using these cookie cutters that I picked up at an antique shop in my local area. These um, cookie cutters are almost all vintage cookie cutters except for maybe three. I was looking for Christmas cookie cutters, but I did pick up all the ones that I could find that were this vintage design. So all I'm gonna do is trace around my cookie cutter. I did pick out a different piece of paper from the paper pack for each one of my cookie cutters. So I'm gonna continue this process with all of the rest of the ornaments that are vintage. And I'm just using a different piece of paper for each one of the ornaments. So now that I have them all cut out, I'm ready to assemble them. Um, these are really awesome because you're just going to press the paper into the cookie cutter. Um, what I did was after I had it cut out, I pressed it in first, then I took some hot glue and went in the inside of the cookie cutter and then pressed my paper back in just so that my paper already kind of was flattened out to go into the design. So if you have a super hot glue gun like I do, make sure you're wearing some kind of finger protectors or something just to make sure when you press down the paper, this is super thin and these are metal. So the underneath part of your cookie cutter is going to be be pretty hot. So after I have that done, then I'm going to do that same process for all of these vintage ornaments. Um, I'm not going to make you watch me do that, but just know that I'm using that same process to do all of these ones. So I do have three P um, three cookie cutters that are not necessarily vintage so if you can't find the ones with the backing you could still make the same project using just Christmas cookie cutters and I wanted to show you the process so this one was a little bit more tricky this particular cookie cutter with the rubber um, part on the back of it actually worked better than the other two but you're just going to trace around just like we did the other cookie cutter, but this time I'm using some cardstock and I'm gonna cut around to make it just slightly bigger than the cookie cutter so that I can glue the cookie cutter onto the cardstock. That gives me the back that this cookie cutter is missing. And then I can take my paper and either push it down into the cookie cutter i did try to do that but it didn't quite work as good as it did with the vintage ones or you could take just a regular glue stick glue the patterned paper cut out onto the cardstock paper and then glue the cookie cutter on top of that i did do that towards the end and that did seem to work a little bit better but it's basically the same process you're going to give it back to your cookie cutter and then you're going to glue in your patterned paper
Now we're ready to assemble the wreath and these vintage cookie cutters are a little bit tricky. They have like a section in the back that sticks up that you could hold on to if you were going to cut out actual cookies. And so it was a little tricky to glue that onto wicker, but um, you just kind of have to keep holding it in place and um, stabilizing it while the hot glue dries. So I did lay out the cookie cutters prior to gluing them onto the wreath just so I had an idea of how I wanted them to be laid out. I was slightly disappointed because I felt like I didn't have quite enough cookie cutters. I had 11 cookie cutters in total um, and it wasn't quite enough to like overlap them um, once I had them all over. I think I only had two that were able to overlap on it. So if you're going to recreate this and you get your wicker wreath form from the Dollar Tree, I think that you'll probably be fine with 11 cookie cutters because this wicker wreath was slightly bigger than the ones that you can pick up there. If you're going to have a bigger wicker wreath, then I suggest maybe about 15 cookie cutters because that way you'll have some that you can lay on top of each other. So all I'm going to do here is just complete gluing on the cookie cutters onto the wreath form and then we're ready to kind of add the bow and a few embellishments. So the inspiration piece for this project had the cookie cutters just glued to each other in the form of a circle. I didn't feel that that would be very sturdy, so that's why I chose to glue them to a wreath form, but that's also an option. You could just glue the cookie cutters together in a circle and make the wreath that way. So now I'm ready for my bow at the top and I just wanted a simple bow so I just folded this over about three times. You'll, can, you'll see I made kind of a boo-boo here. I have like a section of the bow that's just sort of sticking out and I guess I wasn't paying attention when I folded over the ribbon so I just glue that down with some hot glue and you'll never know once we make the wreath. Um, or once we add the bow to the wreath. So I'm just going to um, fluff it out and then I go ahead and make some tails for this. I glue this bow on to the tails and then I'm gonna glue it on to the middle of the wreath. So to give this middle part a little bit more dimension, I'm just gonna take some twine, wrap it around a few times. I think it ends up being maybe about 15 times that I go around this, um, but I give it a good, um, hefty dose of twine here in the middle to give it just um, more character I guess but then I'm going to go ahead glue it to the tails and then I dovetail the ends of my tails and glue it to the wreath. I did go ahead and dovetail the ends of that ribbon and I did shorten it up a little bit just so you could see all the cookie cutters. So you could totally stop right here and the wreath is super cute as it is. I just felt like there was some pieces that were um, pretty bare on my wreath. So I decided to take this buffalo check uh, ribbon. I just made little basic shoelace bows with it and dovetailed the ends and then I'm gluing those into some of the bare spots on the wreath and I do about five of these ribbons all around and I like to have odd numbers because I think um, that it draws your eye more but it's totally up to you if you even wanted to do this step or how many bows you wanted to put on there so after I get these bows glued on then this project is complete.
I hope you guys enjoyed today's project. I had a lot of fun making this and I'd been wanting to make one for a long time and I just kind of happened to follow upon those vintage cookie cutters and so it was just meant to be. Let me know if you're going to recreate it um, or if this is even something you would like to have in your home. I would think that adding recipes to this might be super cute. <laughs> Maybe my next wreath will be a recipe wreath. As always, wherever you are in your journey is a perfect place to start and I will see you guys in the next video.